Yeah, good. A very good evening. Right. Uh, so it's been uh, a break to our live session. So let's uh, start this live session with renewed enthusiasm. So I hope you guys are ready. So before we start, uh, do keep the following questions and uh, add up all the homework questions to this particular notes which you are maintaining. And also I have some additional questions for you which we can discuss over May. So let's start our live session with the following case-based question and discuss uh, certain related aspects pertaining to this particular question. Okay, right. So as you can see, a 60-year-old female notices a swelling on right side of her face that has been enlarging for the last one year. One year. Physical examination reveals three to four centimeter firm, mobile, painless mass palpable in the region of right parotid gland. Intraoral examination reveals normal mucosa and patient has no difficulty in chewing, mastication or talking. Now, this condition is most likely to be, before we jump into the question, I want you to carefully observe the keywords in this particular question. So as you can see, age, 60 years. So, uh, old age comparatively. And also you can see a swelling which is slow growing uh, for the past one year, which is obviously slow growing, right? So that's another keyword we have. And you can see physical examination reveals a firm but mobile and painless mass which is palpable in the region of right parotid gland. And intraoral examination reveals normal mucosa. So no signs of infection or inflammation, another keyword. And the patient has no difficulty in chewing food or talking, which means asymptomatic, another keyword. So the condition is most likely to be, so what do you think? Jogren syndrome, pleomorphic adenoma, silolithiasis, mucoepidermoid carcinoma. So which one do you think is more appropriate answer? So based on the keywords, it's obvious. Usually, uh, the mean age of occurrence of pleomorphic adenoma is 43 years, but uh, it's seen usually in fourth decade to sixth decade. It doesn't mean that it's not seen in younger individuals. There are cases where pleomorphic adenoma is seen even in younger adults, including children. But mostly in uh, you know old age, uh, mean age of 43 as mentioned in Schaefer, and it is slow growing. And also it is mobile without any fix, fixation to the underlying tissues. And asymptomatic, usually no pain is associated with this pleomorphic adenoma. So obviously it has to be pleomorphic adenoma. But before we jump into the answer, let's re review and rule out the other options if possible. What about Jogren's syndrome? Don't you think in Jogren's syndrome you see enlargement of glands? However, Jogren syndrome, it is bilateral, isn't it? So we can rule out Jogren syndrome. Silolithiasis, salivary gland stones, usually accompanied by inflammation, sialadenitis, it is painful. So you can rule out this option as well because patient is asymptomatic. And what about mucoepidermoid carcinoma? It could be mucoepidermoid carcinoma. However, mucoepidermoid carcinoma incidence is very less comparatively. So only definitive diagnosis can be established by histopathology. So there is no doubt in it. But among the given options, which one do you think is more appropriate? As you all rightly mentioned, pleomorphic adenoma. Right. So pleomorphic adenoma is one of the most common. In fact, it's the most common salivary gland tumors. And of all the tumors of parotid gland, pleomorphic adenoma is the most common one, which is found in parotid. So the most common salivary gland tumor is pleomorphic adenoma, and the most common parotid tumor is pleomorphic adenoma, right? I hope it's clear. Now, let's move on to the next question, a related question. Gene which is implicated in this condition. So in case of pleomorphic adenoma, what is the gene that is implicated? I mean, this is purely memory-based. So I always suggest you to make a note of all such, you know, uh, memory-based points or topics and only through repeated revision. And of course, with mnemonics, we can master the same. So the 
pleomorphic adenoma gene, PLAG1, as you all rightly mentioned, fantastic. So which has been mapped to a chromosome 8Q12. Okay, good. PLAG1, so pleomorphic, PLA, pleomorphic adenoma. Uh, so pleomorphic, PLAG1, which is implicated or which is mapped to the chromosome number 8Q12. Okay, so do make a note of that point. Fantastic. Now let's move on to the next question. The most common location of this condition is, as you know, parotid area is the most common location, but in par parotid gland, which is the most common site. So the most common site or location of pleomorphic adenoma in parotid gland is deep lobe of parotid gland, superficial lobe of parotid gland, lower pole of superficial lobe, none of the above. So which one do you think is a more appropriate answer? By the way, I'll give you a hint. Parotid gland, I mean, pleomorphic adenoma is found in superficial lobe as well as in a deep lobe. But most common location would be But it seems you're very familiar with your basics. So lower pole of superficial lobe, majority of the cases, around 10%, uh, it's in deeper lobes as well. Okay, good, fantastic. Now let's move on to the penultimate question. Histologically, the condition demonstrates, so pleomorphic adenoma, histologically demonstrates glandular epithelium, osseous areas, chondroid areas, or only A. So which one do you think is more appropriate answer? We're talking about pleomorphic adenoma. It's also called as mixed tumor. So I've given you a hint. So you should be able to answer now. I'm sure you'll answer even without the hint. Yes, it's a mixed tumor. But anyways, we'll get back to that a bit later. At the end of the session, in the form of a homework question. So pleomorphic, as the name itself indicates, uh, it, in fact, you know, histologically, the morphologic diversity is one of the characteristic features of pleomorphic adenoma. Diverse appearance. So the cells, the tumor cells are capable of differentiating into epithelial cells as well as mesenchymal cells, leading to formation of fibrous areas, hyalinized areas, chondroid areas, myxoid areas, osseous areas, along with epithelium. Right. So this is very, very important. So A, B, and C is right answer. Good. So it's called as mixed tumor, but we'll get back to that once again at the end of the session. And finally, how do you treat pleomorphic adenoma? Surgical excision, radiation therapy, salivary gland removal, symptomatic treatment through pharmacological measures. So which one do you think is the most appropriate management protocol for pleomorphic adenoma? Are you sure it's all of the above? Because uh, this has been asked even in previous entrances n number of times. Pleomorphic adenoma, these tumors are relatively radio resistant. So radiotherapy is contraindicated, right? I'll get back to that again in the form of an additional question. So radiotherapy is contraindicated because these tumor cells are radio resistant. So you can rule out all of the above and radiation therapy. And why do you bother about symptomatic treatment? Because in most of the cases, you don't find facial involvement, no paralysis, no pain, asymptomatic. So you can rule out option D as well. What about A and C? Good. So he says A and C. Of course. See, various case reports are mentioned about enucleation, uh, partial uh, peritidectomy, total peritidectomy, right? So all of these are possible. So surgical excision, salivary gland removal, so depending upon the extent of the spread of these lesions, obviously, it can be either A or C, right? Partial peritidectomy, subtotal, total peritidectomy, even enucleation has been mentioned in one of the case reports, right? So you can go with A and C, right? I hope it's clear. So we'll try to summarize all that we have discussed so far, and then we'll get back to our questions. Some questions which require critical thinking, right? So as we can see, a case 
And by the way, pleomorphic adenoma, when we are talking about pleomorphic adenoma, what about the fixation? Again, we'll get back to that in the form of equation. So you can see the mean age is four through six decade. Average is 43 years. So 60-year-old female notices swelling, which is slow growing for the past one year. And it is firm, mobile. Mobile obviously indicates it's not uh, fixating to the underlying tissues or overlying skin. Painless mass, capable, uh, which is palpable in the right parotid region. Normal mucosa, no symptoms whatsoever. So it could be mostly pleomorphic adenoma, which is also called as mixed tumor. It's a synonym. And the gene which is implicated is PLAG1, which is mapped to 8Q12 chromosome. And the most common location in parotid gland. So, in fact, the most common salivary gland tumor is pleomorphic adenoma. And the most common tumor of parotid gland is pleomorphic adenoma as well. So, the most common location is parotid gland. And in parotid gland, the most common site is, as you all mentioned, lower pole of superficial lobe. Right? Good. Also, it doesn't mean that it's not found in deeper lobes. As per the information, Schaeffer's around 10% of the cases in deeper lobes. And histologically, the condition demonstrates all of the above. So uh, this morphological diversity is one of the characteristic features of pleomorphic adenoma. Consider this very, very important. And treatment is by the following, except radiation therapy, because these tumors are radio-resistant. Now let's get back to the homework questions. So you can make a note of them, and then you can get back through mail for discussion. So first question, pleomorphic adenoma, we're saying it's most commonly seen in parotid gland. It doesn't mean that it's not found in other tumor, other, other areas or other salivary glands. It's also found in submandibular, sublingual, minor salivary glands. However, its occurrence in sublingual gland area is very rare, and it can occur in minor salivary gland areas intraorally. If that's the case, which is the most common location? I'll repeat the first question. So pleomorphic adenoma, if it occurs in minor salivary glands, around, so it can occur in minor salivary glands. If it occurs in minor salivary glands, which is the most commonly affected site within the oral cavity or in the oral cavity? So that's one question. The second question is, is pleomorphic adenoma fixed to the underlying tissues? You see, we're talking about uh, mobility of this uh, swelling. So let me ask you this question. Is pleomorphic adenoma fixed to underlying tissues or overlying skin? It can be uh, pleomorphic adenoma of major salivary glands or minor salivary glands, doesn't matter. Is it fixative or is it fixed to the underlying tissues or to the overlying skin? So that's uh, something I want you to find out because you'll find different information in this regard. And the third question is, we're saying that this pleomorphic adenoma is radio resistant, so radiotherapy is contraindicated. So why is pleomorphic adenoma radio resistant? It's a challenging question, but I want you to probe, refer articles, and see if you can get back with relevant information. So why is pleomorphic adenoma radio resistant? Fourth question, now, this is uh, like a general question. Uh, you can note down or let me know the differences between benign and malignant salivary gland tumors. So we have a table in Schaefer's. I wanted to refer a couple of points and then you can get back to me. So differences between benign and malignant salivary gland tumors. And final question, fifth question. This pleomorphic adenoma is called as mixed tumor. We're saying it's mixed tumor because we're finding mixture of epithelial cells, mesenchymal cells, and so on. But in true sense, is it mixed? In other words, is it derived from more than one germ layer? So is it mixed in true sense? So that's something which I want you to find out, right? So these are a set of five questions. I've given you extra questions. Usually I give two to three questions, but since we had a gap, I wanted to make sure that you have adequate homework. So try to find out answers for these five questions. Get back through mail for discussion. I'll guide you accordingly. All right? I hope it's clear and I hope you found the session informative. See to that you're maintaining notes. Right? Consider this very, very important and that's what active learning is all about. Right? So wish you all the best. Love you all. Good night. Yes, Richa is asking up Joe book hand me here.
देखो वो कौन से है कहा मिलेगा हम लोग को दिस इज यू वॉन्ट दिस बुक या इट्स अवेलेबल हियर इट्स अवेलेबल इन ग्लास केस एंड क्लोज अलॉन्ग साइड अ बीच आई गिवन इज जी पी एस कोऑर्डिनेट इन द प्रीवियस सेशन सो दिस हाइल सिनोपसिस कंटेनिंग ऑल क्वेश्चन which are going to come in your upcoming entrance you can find that here that's one option the other option is you can follow all the sessions and make notes that's up to you to decide uh, this is uh, this is not textbook this is my notes okay yeah this is my notes i mean i'm not joking i mean i don't know why you guys are laughing but i'm not joking say riya seems to be smiling but i placed a copy of this high yield synopsis containing all important points and information which we are going to get in the upcoming entrance here you can find the copy here right so i haven't erased this uh, i've just put that in tag because i mean it so you can find a copy out there okay guys so weekend so i'll be planning more live sessions i'll be getting back to you again tomorrow and day after tomorrow and i'll let you know the time so okay Yeah, I'll let you know the timings accordingly. Do keep a tab on our updates group. So love you all. Take care. Good night.